Welcome to this fourth part in a series on characteristic subgroups. In the previous parts, we defined a characteristic subgroup, proved some basic properties, and then looked at a few examples. In this video, we will look at how the characteristic subgroup relation on subgroups of a group interplays with the normal subgroup binary relation on the subgroups of a group. In other words, given this chain of subgroups, H, N and G of a group G. We've shown already that if N is characteristic in G, then N is normal in G. We've shown that if N is normal in G, this does not imply that N is characteristic in G. In other words, the property of being a characteristic subgroup is strictly stronger than the property of being a normal subgroup. And we showed in another video that if H is normal in N and N is normal in G, this does not imply that H is normal in G. A natural question to then ask is, does this result change if we replace normal with characteristic? In other words, if H is characteristic in N and N is characteristic in G, does this mean that H is characteristic in G? Maybe that doesn't hold and H is just normal in G. What if H is characteristic in N and N is normal in G, or H is normal in N and N is characteristic in G. In this video, we will attempt to answer these questions. But before we do that, recall that in part one, we had this following group, this Klein 4 group. So this is the cyclic group of order 2, direct product with itself generated by elements X and Y to give the following four element group. We then had this subgroup H of order two of G. H is normal in G, but we showed that H was not characteristic in G. Now note that H is characteristic in itself, as is G. So we've got an example here where H is characteristic in H and H is normal in G, but H is not characteristic in G, and H is normal in G, G is characteristic in G, but H is not characteristic in G. So in other words, the best we can hope for in 2 and 3 here is that H characteristic in N, N normal in G implies H normal in G, and H normal in N, N characteristic in G implies H normal in G. What we will show in this video is that if H is characteristic in N and N is characteristic in G, then H is characteristic in G. In other words, unlike for normal subgroups, this property of being a characteristic subgroup is transitive. We will show that if H is characteristic in N and N is normal in G, then H is normal in G. So that's this part. And finally, we will show that if H is normal in N and N is characteristic in G, this does not even imply that H is normal in G. For the proof of this first part, let alpha be an automorphism of G. To show that H is characteristic in G, we have to show that it's fixed under this automorphism alpha. We have that N is characteristic in G by assumption, which says that alpha of N fixes N. Note that the restriction of alpha to N actually defines an automorphism of N. Then, because H is characteristic in N, the restriction of this automorphism fixes H. But now note that the image of H under this restriction is just equal to the image of H under the original automorphism alpha. So H is fixed by alpha. In other words, H is characteristic in G. Now we prove the second part. Let H be characteristic in N, N normal in G, we will show that H is normal in G. To show that H is normal in G, we need to show that for an arbitrary element G in our group G, we have that GHG inverse equals H. We have that N is normal in G, so GNG inverse equals N. Then this map that sends elements N of the normal subgroup to GNG inverse is actually the restriction 
of this map, CG, the conjugation map, from G to itself, sending elements X of G to GX, G inverse. And in fact, when you restrict this map, this is an inner automorphism of G, you actually get an automorphism of N for every element G in our group G. As this map is an automorphism of N, and H is characteristic in N, we must have that it fixes H. In other words, GH, G inverse equals H. And this just says that H is a normal subgroup in G. We've, we've, we've proven this. For this final part, we will construct a counterexample. In other words, we will show that there is a group G with subgroups N and H, such that H is a normal subgroup of N and N is a characteristic subgroup of G, but H is not a normal subgroup of G. It turns out that the counterexample we use to show that the normal subgroup property is not transitive works equally well here. In that example, we had G equal to the alternating group A4 on four letters. We had the following normal subgroup N of A4 consisting of all of the disjoint two cycles. And then we had the following two element subgroup H of N, which was normal in N. We showed in another video that if the H was normal in N, N was normal in G, but H was not normal in G. Now, let's turn to CELO theory to show that N is characteristic in G. We have that the size of G equals 12, that just equals 2 squared times 3. N is of order 4, so this says that N is a CELO 2 subgroup of G. We have that N is normal in G, so N is the unique CELO2 subgroup of G by conjugacy. And in the previous part, we showed that this implies that N is characteristic in G. So we have H normal in N, N characteristic in G, but H not normal in G. So we've established three.